So my, my, I, I, had, I have also one application on FloodHub, and my motivation was uh, just, I'm, I'm using Linux, so I, I wanted to distribute application for Linux, uh, and FloodHub is like nice environment for, for that, and I like also the idea to have like web page with list of all applications like store, and the the other distribution doesn't have that web page. Like like if you have RPM or Debian package, uh, it's this is this is like a problem for me that it is, it is like many places to look for some application. So I I wanted to distribute my application I, and I, I choose FloodHub for for that purpose. Hello, hello, hello. Yep, that's good. Um, okay, so question two. Um, how does FlatHub compare to other distribution platforms regarding the developer experience? Uh, well, I guess so, yeah, given that it's part of the deal. <laughs> um, yeah, just before I explain why I started using Flathub Flatback, which is was uh, yeah distributing my apps to everyone essentially, or as many people as possible with minimum effort. Uh, but uh, as I continued working on Flathub and Flatback distribution, I realized all the advantage of Flatback. I was a bit hesitant before that, but then I realized uh, isolation is incredibly useful. Uh, we just published an app yesterday called uh, Dino. And there is a CVE in one of its dependencies, uh, and it was it's extremely complicated for various reasons to fix it, or non-trivial to fix it in distribution, because of dependencies of dependencies of dependencies, and uh, because the flatback is isolated, we could uh, patch a dependency directly in in the yeah in the in the package and and fix that CVE, and yeah it was the first distribution of Dino to fix that that CVE. Um, also, I make an other app. Uh, called Junction that does a bunch of um, uh, magic, um, and I was able to patch uh, glib directly in my app uh, without you know touching the rest of the ecosystem and and enable this one thing I needed to have that I wouldn't be able to do on regular distribution because it doesn't have any sort of isolation. So in that regard, uh, yeah, extremely useful compared to uh, what I know in other places. Yep. Thank you. Uh, so my desktop is mostly running flat packs, user side installed. Uh, maybe you know my cross desktop. I guess if you heard about it, so that's, that's my daily driver. I really appreciate the fact that, you know, Essentially, base system is clean. I have the minimal installation of GNOME and everything else is living in the home directory. My system is relatively clean. It's, uh, yeah, for maintenance purpose, I don't have to reinstall this machine as often as some other systems because uh, the cleanup is as simple as cleaning up the home gear, right? So, that, that yeah, also the initial experience, you install something, and then basically after initial setup, Everything's being pulled fresh to the system. It's also kind of really nice user experience, which moves most of the installation to the first boot rather than the installation process of the base system. That kind of I really like from other dis not distribution system too. Um, I think one of the most appealing reasons is that you can use uh, dependencies that are not released yet somehow. A lot of applications in the early days of GTK4 uh, were able to try it and give it a release out, which is something you cannot do in the traditional distribution method because you need uh, a stable version of the library first, and that's something uh, very interesting. So about the development experience, I, I can tell about my quickly about my development experience with um, FlatHub, Flatback. Um, I'm not sure how technical this should get into, but um, there are lots of details when crafting a flatback sandbox, and it is a bit difficult 
to find proper documentation on these details. Um, even though there is documentation online published about like flat pack manifests and whatnot, um, that's also the experience of other people I heard uh, from, for example, the, uh, the OBS Studio community also find a little bit hard to figure out what needs to happen on the manifest side to get a clean build, etc. On the FlatHub side, um, well, at least for my use case, which I'm thinking mostly about OBS Studio, not on the GNOME apps that I that I work on because are those are simpler to to publish and etc. But on Ob Studio, the um, the main thing that FlatHub has that is very valuable is the publishing pipeline that we managed to figure out on GitHub. So OBS Studio developers publish a release on GitHub and a, an automatic pipeline runs and publishes directly to either FlatHub and or FlatHub beta. beta sorry. Um, right now, it is a tad bit manual to do that because we have to like spawn some OS3 invocations and it's kind of annoying. So hopefully in the future we'd have like a FlatHub specific action that we can just plug in a flat pack build and it would output a flat pack deployment on FlatHub instead of you know checking if the image size is correct, check if the metadata is right and, and do all of that using OS3 and kind of kind of annoying. That's, I think that's it for me. Hi, I'm a Debian and Ubuntu uh, developer. Um, so instead of, instead of developing apps myself, I package existing apps. Um, Debian is a very decentralized project. Um, there's, no, there's nobody in charge deciding this is the way we're going to do things. And so that makes something as simple as building a Debian package, um, quite complicated because um, you look for advice on how to do this if you're new to it. And there's so many different ways of building packages and so many things that could go wrong. Um, so um, I'm more experienced with Snap packages. So with Snap, it's nice that there is, there is a, a single step to build a package that it's just, you don't have to worry about all the complexity and I imagine the same idea applies with Flatpak also. Uh, hi, I, uh, I develop a few uh, Flutter packages um, and release them via FlatHub. Um, my, um, unfortunately, with uh, Flutter specifically, the uh, way to publish on FlatHub is not really documented. All the documentation for Flutter is uh, snap specific. Uh, and one unfortunate aspect of um, releasing Flutter apps on FlatHub is that uh, Flutter uh, builds are dependent on an online connection. So if you want to build client side, uh, you can't really do that with Flutter. So, so the solution right now is to pre-build binaries and then release them uh, via FlatHub. Um, so that's unfortunate. Uh, also, uh, it's, it's not really documented and the, the pipelines there are not really, um, uh, not as smooth as releasing for Android, for example, or for, for iOS where, where you have um, tools that help with, with build automation, uh, with uh, publishing automation. Uh, it, doesn't really seem like there's anything like that for uh, FlatHub right now. And um, in general, if you want to uh, package Flutter apps for FlatHub, uh, you kind of have to do a lot of research yourself on how to do it uh, and figure it out yourself. Uh, so just the documentation side of things could, could be improved. And of course, but that's on Flutter's side, the, the online um, dependency. Um, talking about Android and iOS distribution platforms, which is what I'm familiar with beside FlatHub, 
in that same category. Uh, one thing I really appreciate is the low friction to publish on FlatHub. It's not perfect, but compared to Android and iOS, which uh, ask you a thousand different questions, ask you to pay this, to check that, to agree to these terms and conditions, and this other one, um, on the first release of an app, it take takes two days' work to publish it, uh, because you also need to make the screenshot like this and write the text for this. It's insane. Um, so that's something I really appreciate with FlatHub, uh, very low friction. On the other hand, it's very difficult to automate uh, updates. So there is this tool called Flatpak X module checker thing. Um, but what it does is it automatically check if there is a new release of a package, right? Uh, I don't want to do this. I want to run some script in my development repository that will update the uh, FlatHub, uh, sorry, the yeah, the FlatHub repository. Uh, and but that's not possible now because we need to open a pull request. So it would have to open a pull request and then manually merge it. It makes automation for the developer a bit difficult. Yeah, so that's something I would really like to see as, a, as an improvement. But that's minor. Uh, the friction is incredibly um, uh, low. Yeah. Cool, very cool. Um, I mean, I, I think somewhere in the plan for this year, I shouldn't really tell you. Come talk tomorrow, you'll hear about our plans. Um, so how has publishing applications on FlatHub impacted your strategy for development and distribution? Amazingly. <laughs> yeah, because um, I, can, I can speak maybe not super officially, but half officially on behalf of the OBS community. OBS community. Um, in the past, the only official way to get OBS was through a PPA on Debian, on Ubuntu specifically. Well, it, it wouldn't work on Debian. I think that's still the case for the PPA validity, but now we have a comprehensive build with um, features that are not enabled in any other Linux. We have an official build, the Flatpak, the FlatHub build, which have features, has features that are not enabled in any other particular build because they require like secret tokens on GitHub and whatnot. So, how, how it impacted the development and distribution strategy. Um, it impacted that, it, it enabled that. <laughs> that's, that's the impact first. First and foremost, I think. Uh, maybe, I'm not sure if it's uh, the right take on the question. But basically, the fact that people, so I'm one of the release managers from OpenSUSE, and uh, we actually have to now pay attention to packs, right? Uh, we have two distributions, and we are setting up new lib 16 in the um, next few months. And we really have to respect that there is a demand for packs, and we will have actually two spins. One will be with Flatpak enabled desktop, right? Out of the box, Firefox coming from FlatHub, which is what we do on micro as desktop right now. And the other is traditional system, and I can see a rising popularity on both. So if you would ask me, like we have to really pay attention, we have to deliver what users are asking for, which is also flatback based distribution. And I'm really happy that we are using FlatHub in that case, because I see a lot of potential for maybe contributing to the gatekeeping process and so on, rather than if every distribution does it by its own. But I'm also aware that we are supporting building Flatpaks in OBS, which kind of suggests that maybe in the future we would build it on our own. But right now, we take it from FedHub, and I do really like that. Um, well, I wouldn't say I have a strategy, but rather, you know, whatever I can do on my free time. Um, before FlatHub, before I published the FlatHub, I essentially wanted to use all the nice features that would be provided by the platform. Uh, in the case of the app I have in mind, it's the GNOME platform. 
and I always had to wait for the new APIs to be available in various distribution, in this case Arch, because that's what I cared about. It was a bit um, annoying and frustrating, especially because I wanted to move fast and you know improve things quickly and yeah, also contributed to some stuff in the platform that I had, my own stuff that I had to wait then to be able to use in my apps. Um, now, uh, because the platform or the libraries or whatever is bundled directly with the things, I can do it on my own terms, publishing my app, rather than waiting for distribution uh, for various reasons. And so I found it way less uh, stressful, actually. Yeah, because I can just do it on the weekend, any weekend, yeah. I also find it incredibly use, uh, useful that you can build any system component, like even bigger ones, super easily, like just adding it to the manifest and be done, which is very hard in many distribution cases, as far as I'm aware. For me personally, the, the distribution strategy didn't change. So I, I, I distribute application on Windows, in Flood Hub and in Fedora, and I do it the same also after using Flatpak so, and, and Flood Hub. But the application is very small, so <laughs> it's nothing complex. Okay, so have you received any feedback from users regarding the FlatHub distribution of your application? And if so, what was the feedback? Yeah, I had one feedback was FlatBack, Flatback is crashing, and it was obviously some, some problem with distribution. And the second feedback was uh, actually the feature, so I restricted application to access just the home folder, and uh, yeah, users expect to access network storage from the application, so uh, I, I, and, and I'm still not sure what to set in, into it correctly, so maybe I, I will stop after the talk. Um, there, there was feedback, I can tell you. <laughs> um, so, in in the, I'm, 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 I think I'm gonna be speaking mostly about OBS Studio because it's a large project. It has, um, at the very least, on Linux, forty thousand users from what we see from the numbers we see on 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 FlatHub, probably more, and on Windows it has more than, uh, it's a seven digit number at the very least, so it's a pretty big application. So, feedback. It's, a, it's, a it's an interesting topic. Ob Studio uh, does beta releases and then RC releases, more or less like GNOME, so it gathers feedback from beta and then has a, it has a beta channel that people can test before an actual release. Um, in the past, there was no feedback from Linux users because um, the beta channels were only for Mac and Windows. But Hub Beta allows us to um, gather any feedback on Linux before the actual release of the application. And the feedback, well, uh, feedback specific to Ops is probably not relevant, but. Um, the feedback, the meta feedback about Flatpak is that it enables feedback. <laughs> um, and then people can find bugs and, and whatnot, and that's fantastic. Quality of Ob Studio on Linux improved vastly after, after this. Um, it's still kind of a shame that, sorry, I used the wrong wording. Um, from what I see, this is very not representative, but the majority of beta users are not 
on Ubuntu, they are on not Ubuntu. They are using literally everything else, which is pretty not representative of, of the wider community. So for them, grabbing a flat pack is easy. Um, the feedback that they share usually is, of, is around like extensions. It is difficult to find extensions using the command line. Ob Studio has plugins, so on GNOME software you see a, a add-ons section with um, lots of different plugins with different features, and users usually find that hard to, usually, usually it's hard for them to figure that out, that there's a separate plugin mechanism on top of Ob Studio plugin mechanism. Um, is this relevant? Should I continue? Um, well, let, let's, let's give people a chance to talk. I think it probably goes a bit more into Flatpak than FlatHub, but I mean, obviously, this is the whole stack, but. Yeah, well, most of the people who use the beta version of Ob Studio, for example, they already have FlatHub uh, pre-configured on their computers. So they use, either use a distribution that has that enabled, not, not the beta version, but FlatHub already enabled, so they get to know Ob Studio very easily and, and smoothly, for example, through GNOME software or KDE Discover. Um, this is, this is a, a bit surprising to me because I would expect more people to come from Ubuntu, for example, but um, they don't seem very active, on, at least on, on, on the support channels of Ob Studio. Um, yeah, basically, FlatHub enabled beta testing. That's the feedback I have from users. Yeah, in a, in a similar note, uh, I, I also felt that I had like a shorter feedback loop with uh, distributors because uh, of the fragmentation problem. I always had this issue that users wanted to consume features that were uh, not yet available on their distros or somehow, sometimes were not even making to the distros because that was, uh, the stack was very coupled with other applications. So for example, Virt Manager uses the same stack as, uh, as GNOME Boxes. So oftentimes a feature that you enable in Virt Manager is not going to work in Boxes and vice versa. And by decoupling those things, uh, users are now able to just consume the app as I envision. And this is a feedback that I often get. I even had users telling me that uh, they used to switch to Fedora to have a better Boxes experience and now they can actually consume Boxes in their own distro because with flat pack that doesn't even matter anymore. We have nearly uh, 20, 25 maximum more minutes. Well, 23 actually. Okay. <laughs> um, so, here's one. Um, do you currently or plan to accept payments or donations or subscriptions for your app? And which do you prefer and why? Uh, so currently I accept, um, I'm using LiberaPay uh, for uh, quick donations. Um, I, I would like, I, I know that FlatHub is planning to introduce a payment system. I'm not exactly sure uh, how that's gonna work. Uh, so far, uh, I think my favorite way of uh, dealing with payments is uh, what Elementary OS does, which uh, is pay what you want, basically, but you, you have a set price, uh, but if a person doesn't want to pay it or doesn't have the means to pay that, uh, they can set their own price or um, just download it for free. Um, and I think that's probably the most straightforward way rather than asking vaguely for donations without suggesting a specific uh, specific price or um, uh, other things that I've seen that I don't think have worked very well. Uh, so, so that's what I prefer. I do not plan to accept payment, donation, or subscription for downloading my app directly. 
And the reason for that is because I want users to use the flat hub version of my app. And I'm afraid that um, if there's payment involved, um, maybe not if it's donation, but at least payment or subscription, which I'm interested in, they will go with the free distribution of the app, which I cannot prevent because it's free software. And I'm happy, actually, that I cannot prevent that. Um, what I've had in mind recently is to put the support uh, forum, tracker, whatever, behind uh, subscription. So I distribute the app for free, but the support uh, comes uh, does not come for free because it takes a lot of my time, whereas the software I can distribute at zero cost to me, especially on FlatHub. So I would be really interested if there was a subscription option in FlatHub, uh, not for the software itself, but that would give me some kind of token, whatever, that, uh, and then some API that I can then use on custom software to check if this is a, pay, uh, a, a, a paid user or a user that contributes financially. Any other thoughts about payments? Subscriptions versus donations versus savings? I am planning to accept donations probably through subscriptions on one of my little apps that is not um, neither a GNOME app, like it's a personal app, it's a, not, a, not a GNOME app, nor Ob Studio, it's not mine. Um, still not if it's going to be just donations or subscription or how much, but that's something that's been floating on my mind. So, like a subscription like this kind of Patreon model where you just sort of pay a little bit to support the development. So. Yeah, currently I'm, I'm using LibraPay as donation platform and yeah, it's on FlatHub already. And I don't plan uh, subscription or any, any payments. OK. Um, so I guess we've already had a, a sort of half answer to this question. But would you offer additional content or functionality or releases to paid supporters of your app on FlatHub? <laughs> One strong yes. <laughs> and what brings you to this decision? Well. Well, I, I certainly not planning that. Uh, uh, I, I think uh, this is interesting for people who, who are doing that. So if, if FlatHub doesn't provide that functionality, you don't find people who is using FlatHub for that functionality. So if there isn't function, there isn't customer. So, so I would not offer additional content uh, to paid supporters. I, I, uh, I guess there are two ways to do this in open source. Either have an open core model where the, uh, the additional content is closed source, which I don't want to do because I, I want to release all of the, uh, the entire app as uh, open source. Or if it wasn't that way, then that uh, encourages people to basically use uh, forks or copies with you know the copied additional content available for free, uh, so I would I would prefer to not have uh, you know that duality um, and uh, just offer everything um, for uh, as I said in the previous question ideally a pay what you want model if you choose to pay then uh, you get that content but if you can't uh, pay that's okay too you can download it for free. Uh, yeah, to add to what I said previously about, uh, yeah, I basically answer that question, but maybe I can add some more things. Uh, I would consider offering them 
nightly or beta or early release access because that's not easily, um, uh, you can't f find it easily on all the source than, than there except maybe on Arch or repository or whatever. But I know that they wouldn't most likely not try to build it themselves and have missing dependencies and so on. So uh, in this case, I would probably do it. Um, I would also be interested if it came at very little cost to me, for example, or like time-wise, time for example, if there was some kind of service, maybe a third-party service that had access to some FlatHub API that could automatically ship a sticker of my app icon or whatever. I'm not saying you should do that, but if it was possible to build such service, uh, I might consider doing that for everyone and myself. Yeah, something like this that automatically ships a sticker of the app icon if the user has donated more than X, something like this, or a t-shirt, or uh, you know, whatever. I think that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Or automated Slack distribution service. So, yeah. Correct. <laughs> It's not currently on the roadmap. <laughs> um, okay, that's cool. Anything else about sort of additional content or supported content or features? I do not plan on offering content nor functionality. I may consider offering convenience extra builds, nightly builds, for example, um, assuming people could get these builds by themselves, so offering the convenience of building for them. And I would definitely um, offer support or some sort of prioritization for the people who um, subscribe to whatever app I publish. So this is kind of about what FlatHub helps you do with money that you've collected, um, which obviously gets you into tax and legal and all of this stuff. But um, if we get to know sort of how people think about raising funds through the application, so the sponsorship or donations or things, do people just see that as, well, paying for their time, the living costs and things? Do they see that as for the project, the project expenses? So hosting equipment or travel, um, outsourcing development or design or other work. So how do people feel, how do people think about this? Well, you know, more broadly, where should the money go, right? Or where should we help you take the money? Um, definitely that's gonna be living costs and paying other people to work on the app on whatever app I publish. So increasing the increasing the network of people contributing to free software. Yeah, so in the same line as in, uh, increasing the, the, the network of people contributing to free software, I would like to f be able to distribute the funds equally or proportionally to the stack underneath. So I'm relying in the shoulders of giants and uh, I would like to be able to compensate them for providing the APIs that I use. So uh, I would um, I, I work on my apps in my free time. Uh, I, I don't I currently make a living out of them, uh, off of them, but I'd like to. So so it would be great if uh, I was able to uh, make enough to replace my job and to to be able to to devote um, my uh, work time to these to these projects. Uh, that would be I guess priority number one. Um, I can also imagine, uh, though, accepting funds for specific things. So one, uh, an example of something that uh, came up before, um, uh, my apps are cross-platform, cross but I don't release for Apple. Uh, 
uh, um, Apple devices because they require you to pay a yearly fee of, I think, $100 uh, dollars or euros for their Apple developer uh, network uh, that you need to be in if you want to release on the App Store. Uh, so that would be potentially something that, that I could raise funds for uh, or other initiatives like that if, if people uh, were interested enough uh, in um, a specific feature or uh, some spe specific things, it would be possible to, to raise funds specifically for that. Oh, we're good on this one. Um, so, are there specific features or improvements you'd like to see added to FlatHub for the benefit of application developers? I mean, I guess that's not already been discussed because we've, we've mentioned a couple. I've got on track. So yeah, I would like to have uh, more detailed metrics. I would like to have an idea who my user base is, which platforms they are, and how they are consuming my software. I see some potential in integration with, I don't know, like our open QA results. If you test your specific software on our system, I feel like that would be really cool to somehow interlink these. And that would be interesting for Ubuntu or potentially any other distribution too. So we could actually, even when indirectly, help to test out the application on as many platforms as possible. Uh, I would like to see some some variant of Flood Hub for mobile devices. You know, nowadays you have PinePhone with Posh, and you want to run something in Flatpak maybe. Uh, and um, nowadays the applications on the Flood Hub are mostly desktop centric, so the mobile branch would be very nice. So there, there are already some, some changes related to running Flatpak on Sailfish OS, so, so some extra, I don't know, branch would be great. So uh, we put together a proposal for software.opensuse.org when it did this in a com community meeting and we ended up calling it a dyad proposal. It hasn't really moved forward, but we have tons of ideas that we put in there, and some of it was like really looking at FlatHub as some social aspect, including some documentation, ratings, things like that. So just creating a network around FlatHub might be something that uh, could look at. And I'll forward that to you so you can at least take a look at it. Test? Oh, yeah. Uh, I would like that lib app stream port uh, <laughs> done so that we don't lose the metadata. That would be very nice. Yeah, related to filtering for mobile applications. <laughs> uh, so the, uh, one of the things that I know that, is, that are being worked on is um, uh, independence from GitHub, uh, which I would really appreciate. Um, uh, so, uh, for example, being able to use GitLab or your own GitLab instance or uh, other uh, potential uh, Git repositories um, uh, seem like a step forward. Uh, another thing that I uh, ran into recently, I was looking at uh, build automation um, and uh, one of the things that, for example, GitHub uh, offers is GitHub Actions. Uh, which allow you to build inside a specific Linux VM. They're limited to x86 uh, Linux virtual machines. Um, and it might be nice uh, for someone who, uh, who's developing a Flutter app, so I have to pre-compile these, these binaries uh, to be able to pre-compile them for other platforms other um, platforms other than uh, x86 so for example arm but maybe in the future also uh, also risk five for example uh, um, platforms like that uh, I know that this is maybe beyond the scope of Flathub, but it came to to my mind yeah no, I mean that, that's one of the things so we, we are working on that idea of being able to upload directly so yeah then you have your own build pipeline 
um, so presumably you can build a Flutter app in a GitHub action, right? And then you could have the that app upload a step at the end. Um, and then the obvious problem then is that our ARM and any other system goes to zero, basically, um, because uh, our beloved build bot, for all of its intricacy, does build on ARM. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think it's something we need to, to think about. So um, what would you or your organization do to improve FlatHub further? That's not that different to the previous question, but if that inspires any other answers. Uh, I mean, like from the design team side, we've wanted proper curation for a very, very long time. And uh, I would be very happy to help with that if uh, the technical side of that uh, sort of like was in place. Yeah. Can, can you define curation a bit more, as in more? Yeah, as in like, you know, the, the worst apps not showing up on the homepage all the time and like the good apps showing up there more often, like maybe lists of like whatever, like best web development apps, like a any kind of like sort of it, making sure that the best parts of the platform are more visible and the less good parts are less visible. Yeah, I'm not sure I was uh, very clear early on to, uh, earlier, just so kind of to repeat myself. If the APIs allowed it, I would be very interested in doing this automatic sticker shipping thing for paid users, uh, not just for myself, but as a service to other developers. Of course, I would take a cut, but uh, yeah, uh, something like this, yeah. Thank you, my Arb Studio contributor hat on. Um, we are probably going to be the first ones to use whatever new shiny thing Flat Hubs, Flat Hub people want to test and implement and deploy. Um, and we are also actively contributing to like helping with the implementation of this, whatever features are needed to get Arb Studio on FlatHub the best way we can in any capacity. <laughs>